Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I'm going to take a look at the all new Capture One version 20 which was just released today. So version 20 is the latest version of Capture One and there's a whole load of new features and uh, lots of things that have been changed and refined. So in this video I'm going to take a look at some of the key new features of the software and give you a look and uh, let you know what's been changed and um, what to look forward to in the new version. So. First of all, they have made some changes to the interface. So the big thing is the tools now scroll. So let me give you an example of what I mean by this. So if I hop over to any of the tools here, you can see that you now have a scrolling area which you can scroll up and down on the various tools. In the old version of Capture One, if your tools didn't fit in the interface, so say you're working on a small display, um, they would automatically be collapsed like this, you'd have to open and close tools each time that you wanted to access some things if it didn't fit on the screen. And this is kind of a pain because you'd have to be constantly opening and closing tools. Whereas now you can just scroll up and down. So this is kind of more like how say Lightroom, for example, would work. Um, but there's an additional feature as well. So up at the top of each of the tool tabs um, in the adjustment section, you now have this pinned area where you can pin uh, any tools that you want and they will stay at the top. So for example, say you wanted exposure always to be at the top. I can just go to the little pop-up menu here and go move tool to pinned area. So now exposure is pinned to the top. So when I scroll up and down, exposure stays at the top and the other tools will still scroll. And then to get to take this back out of the pinned area, all you have to do is just drag it down like that and it's back. So they've also changed a few little things around the place. So for example, some of the icons have changed. Uh, so the auto adjust instead of being an A is now a little magic wand and you can see that on all the panels. Um, a few other things like the default interface or the default workspaces had a few different changes to it. Now I've actually modified this slightly, but you'll now see export as well as import. So there has been some major changes to some of the tools as well. Um, and let me go through a few of these. So first up, we have the crop tool. So the crop tool has been changed and the old version of the crop tool, I know annoyed quite a few people <laughs> because you used to, you, you would activate the crop tool and you wouldn't actually see anything. So now they have made it so that the uh, edges of it are much clearer and they've also added some keyboard shortcuts for constraints. So in the old version, if you had it set to unconstrained, um, there was no way to constrain it without going into the options and then changing it. So like what I'm doing here. Now they've added the shift key will actually constrain it. So again, much like Lightroom or other software. Uh, holding down the option key will allow you to scale from the center as you're dragging around the crop tool. And then obviously option shift scales from the center and constraints. Um, but probably the biggest request was you can now rotate while also using the crop tool. So you no longer have to use the separate rotate tool. So to rotate with the new crop tool, all you have to do is go to the edges. And if you go to the corners, you'll see the cursor changes to the rotate tool. And now you can just rotate the image. And if you want to rotate from anywhere else, you just hold down the command key on the Mac or the control key on PC and you can rotate. So for example, in this image here, I shot this way too wide and I want to crop in and I can just do this. And then I can rotate slightly if I need to and then just get back off it. And now, so that is the new much improved crop tool. Um, the next thing that's been changed is the basic color editor. So let me just pick an image here. The bit in the old version of Capture One, the color editor was like a color wheel and you had all the swatches below it. Whereas the new version, they've changed it now. So it's much more compact. So you have uh, basically your series of color ranges is now in a set of swatches and you have the controls underneath it. So again, it's kind of like Lightroom and that's kind of a theme with this release. They've, they've basically refined a lot of the interface and made it probably a bit easier for anybody switching to Lightroom. And I'm sure that's not unintentional. Um, but they're not just cosmetic. There's actually quite a few, um, there's actually quite a few functional changes to this as well. So for example, in this image, so say for example, I want to change the blue, I just select the blue and then I can change the values here like so. And, or if I wanted to change the green, I can change the values like so. Um, you can still change the color ranges by clicking on this little dot 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 button. 
So this brings up the color edit color ranges. So this allows you to change the values much like you could before. And then if you don't want that, you can just revert to default. But there's also a new uh, direct color editor cursor tool, which is this little button down here. So if I click on this, I can now drag on an image on color in an image and change it. So if I drag left to right, I change the hue. If I drag up and down, I change the saturation. And if I hold down the Alt key and drag left and right, I can change the lightness. So again, this is something that you kind of have in Lightroom as well, but they've kind of combined um, a few different tools into one. So it'll probably take a bit of getting used to for anybody who's a long term Capture One user, but it certainly makes it much more um, much easier to work with interactively than it did before. Um, the advanced options still remains the same and the skin tone option still remains the same. Let me just give you another example. So say here uh, we have this landscape shot and there is a lot of kind of reds in the image. You want to quickly um, just kind of increase the saturation here and maybe make the reds a bit more vibrant. So with the color, direct color editor selected, all I have to do is just drag up and I'm increasing the saturation. And then if I want to change the kind of hue of the reds, I can just drag it. So one of the advantages of the direct color editor is it will select more than one color at once. So for example, as I'm dragging here, you can see it's selecting both the orange and the yellow and it's adjusting them. And again, so if I select on the greens, I can increase the saturation of the greens and maybe hold down the option key and then reduce the lightness. I want to darken them the greens. And again, I can adjust the yellows. So increase the saturation of the yellows and maybe just hue the yellows, make them kind of more ready. So that's just a quick look at the new color editor. So next up, we have uh, my favorite, which is the new HDR tool. So not to be confused with actual creating HDR images from bracketed shots, the HDR tool uh, has been in Capture One for a long time, and it is what they call their version of shadows and highlights recovery, but they have changed it a bit in the new version and let me just show you. So if I pop over to the exposure tool tab and jump down here to high dynamic range, and let me just reset this. So you will see the first big change is the values are now all centered. So in the previous version, you could only drag the sliders in one direction and they started at the left and you could only drag them to the right. And there was only highlights and shadows, whereas now they're centered. So to recover highlights, you now drag to the left and then if you want to increase highlights, you now drag to the right. So in the previous version of Capture One, you actually couldn't increase the highlights the way I'm doing here now. So that's an, a, an important change. And the same goes for shadows. So if you want to increase the shadows, you just drag to the right and you can actually now decrease shadows, whereas you couldn't in the previous version. But the uh, more important change here is we now have a white and black slider and this is I'd say was my biggest bugbear with Capture One is in order to adjust the black levels or the white levels, you'd have to use the levels tool or you could use the three-way color corrector. Well, now we finally have a proper black and white levels adjustment. So the next new big feature is uh, noise reduction. So let me just jump over here. So they have changed the noise reduction algorithms in Capture One, and basically this is what they're saying about it. They say that the noise reduction tool has been re-engineered for improved performance. It tackles noise on two fronts, luminance noise and color noise, while Capture One 20 brings improved recognition of patterns and edges, better color noise reduction, bigger impacts from the amount slider, and stronger, no stronger noise reduction for images shot at a high ISO. So what does all that mean? Well, here is a photo I shot a while ago, and it's pretty bad because uh, it was shot at ISO 6400 and I've actually pushed this about two stops so we're probably into the into the hundred thousands or so now so if I I'm going to turn the noise reduction off and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this is really really bad and this image would be pretty much unusable under normal circumstances so let me drag the noise reduction right up and you can see it's pretty much got rid of everything. 
and now it's obviously quite a bit soft but as I said this was a unusable image before and I can bring the details back a bit here so again I'm just panning this out at a one-to-one -one crop but the question is how does this compare to the previous version so let me just jump over to Photoshop here because I have a screenshot of the previous version and this is a screenshot of version 12 and the exact same settings 100% uh, on the luminance slider and 75% on the details and as you can see the difference is quite dramatic so this the old version capture 112 is much noisier whereas if we go back to this one you can see the blacks are still black and everything is much smoother now i know there's a lot of artifacts and stuff here but that's just because of the image it's like we're we're really pushing this so uh, let me just give you one more example so i've already set this to 75 and 75 um, and if i zoom in so let me just turn this off so there it is off and there it is at 75 and it's a perfectly usable image at that um in fact when you turn the noise reduction up so high you almost need to add a bit of noise back in or a bit of grain just to kind of cover it a bit um but it does actually work quite well and uh, yeah it's one of the most Im more impressive features of the new version so what else uh, they've also added um, the ability to copy and paste individual layers and in the previous version so let me just give you an example here so in the previous version, you could copy and paste layers between images, but you could only copy and paste your entire layer set. So you couldn't select which layer you wanted to copy. And also if you had images of different resolutions, it wouldn't work. Um, whereas now you can copy and paste individual layers. So, so here I have an image, I have two layers on it. And if I go adjustments, copy and apply adjustments, and we have our adjustments clipboard. And if I scroll down the bottom here, you can see we have layers and we have our two layers. So I can go, I can say, I only want the bright and bottom. I don't want the dark and top layer. So I can just go copy and then move over to this image. And then the other thing is they no, it no longer replaces the existing layers. So in the previous versions of Capture One, if you copied and pasted layers between images, it would overwrite any layers in the images you're pasting to. So now that no longer does that. So if I paste in here, you can see it just adds to the layer set. So we now have bright and bottom and your existing layer is still there. So that's pretty much it for the key new features. I've kind of rattled through them there fairly quickly. So um, I will go into more details in another video and um, I will have some tutorials on how to use the new features in more depth. So overall, Capture 120, I'm kind of impressed with it. Uh, I've been using the beta version for a while now and it's kind of hard to go back to the old one. Um, my favorite changes are finally having a white and black slider into the high dynamic range. And I really like the new color editor as well. I find it much easier to use than the older version. Um, but yeah, I have a full review on my website and you will find the link in the description below. And if you want to check out capture one the link for that will be in the description below as well there's a 30-day trial you can download and you can get the new version or upgrade from the previous version uh, on the capture one store and i'll have links for that in the description below as well so thank you for watching um i hope you found this useful if you do please like this video leave a comment and share and subscribe so thanks for watching and see you next time